Oh, man. How many people do you think ran down to the Rolly store with that stimulus money? Oh, that's a good question. I I have seen a lot more watches on like the people that I know, for sure. Not just watches. Um, I mean, yeah, you weren't buying a Rolly with your whatever. How much was the stimulus even? Twelve hundred bucks, eight hundred. I don't even know what the hell st- like the stimulus check was. It was a, f- a few rounds of twelve hundred. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is that even enough to get a used Rolly? <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, probably not. But uh, it just—I feel like there's you've seen like like uh, not, yeah, I saw videos, but even photos online of people lined up outside like the Chanel store. It's like I felt like luxury goods probably did okay in the last. 18 months or so maybe they didn't kill it but i feel like they did okay <laughs> like you think the one thing people would stop spending money on during a major recession pandemic would be luxury goods and it's like nope oh yeah um yeah. i was looking for uh trying to i don't even know the exact model is a special edition i have that what is it, it's a navio six brightling mm-hmm. and they had a special edition 18 something i i don't know I don't even know what the hell that was, but I was, I always liked it. It's all black face. And I figured, well, they stopped. I saw one in Vegas one time when I was at Aria and they, they didn't like, I didn't like the price on it. Like I like it, but I don't like it that much. Cause <laughs> in my, I think in my first trailing, like, I got like 20% off or something, 25% off. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I ain't paying retail for this shit. You're out of your, you're, I don't want to pay retail for nothing. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> And I didn't like. I saw one. I didn't like the price. It's like I'll just. I'll, I don't like used stuff, but if I, if I find a clean used one, I'll buy it. And then I realized how many Brightlings weren't on the market anymore. Like not even. Hmm. Um, not not just that one in particular. Any. So then I started looking at you know obviously Rolex is what everyone buys. I don't own a Rolex. Not a Rolex. Full disclosure: I'm not a Rolex fan. Um, mm-hmm. I, I got. I, IWC and I got other stuff, but I'm just not a Rolex person. But if you want to s- kind of see the state of the market, I'm like, well, I'll look at uh, how many used Rolexes. And I'm like, wow, they look like the, the market for used Rolexes dried up too. And I'm like, man, people got money for everything right now. But I, I thought this was interesting. I saw it pop up on uh, Instagram. I think they might have posted this article. Hmm. And I'm like, well, shit, how many people are out buying Rolexes? That's true. That's true. Yeah. No, I, I, I remember reading this when, when the article came out in March. And uh, it, it, it's interesting because it basically journeys Sarah Miller, the writer, as she goes and tries on Rolexes in the store and how intimidating that can be. And then there's like this aha moment where it's like, oh, these things are, are beautiful on my wrist. Um, but so, so it's an interesting article. If, if people get a chance to read it, they should. How did you get your 20% discount? <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I realize is if, if you go somewhere that's like a large city or travel destination, you got a much better chance of getting a deal. And that's for most of the major watch brands. And I, you know, the more expensive the watch, I mean, what's your average Rolex today? Like eight grand? I don't see average, the entry level one. The sure. Or seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, and, and I like IWCs, the lower level IWCs, you could probably start finding those for 45, you used to, who knows now, five grand or something like that, the seven, eight grand. Um, some of the other stuff, you know, the perpetual moon phase type yep. stuff you're looking at 20, 30K on up. But I found that, you know, when you start getting to that 15, 20K plus range, it's, it's a little easier to get that deal. But sometimes your local... Um, authorized dealer or AD just isn't that willing to do it if you live in an area that doesn't sell a lot of them. Um, my local dealer doesn't, everyone's got Rolex. You know, I was at a, I was at a party once where I think everybody had a Rolex but me. <laughs> and I, I felt like I wasn't part of the fucking club, right? It's like everyone had a portion of Rolex. It's like, it's like the, I'm getting wealthy starter kit. And <laughs> that's like, everyone had that shit. And I'm all right, I guess I don't fit in here. But, you know, the real watch guys knew what kind of timepiece I had. But I was like, wow, everyone got a Rolex and a Porsche. All right. But if you try to buy a Porsche here, um, if you're looking for, like, the new GT3, if you call the dealer, they're like, yeah, two to three year wait. Now, I know there's other dealers outside of Detroit I call, and I'm not waiting that long. We just don't sell a shit ton of them here. 
And I think it's the same way with the high-end watches. We don't we sell some, but we don't sell a, t- a, a lot. You go to Chicago, or New York, Vegas. Vegas is a great place to buy luxury shit. Mm. Um, you tend to get, you can try to get that 15, 20, any Breitling stuff, you might even get it more than 25. You might get 25% off. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But it's those kind of places where you know it's like impulse buys, people just want some money, and then the, the dealers are trying to just, they're doing volume. I, I think one of the worst things you can do is probably if you got a local shop that doesn't do high volume and you're trying to work off you know 20 percent on a 10 or 15k watch good luck um yeah me personally it's like watches they can be an investment but they're not i just don't want to pay msrp for anything at that point right um <laughs> yeah it's a uh, cut yeah. me i think any big purchase i've ever made from cars to boats to watches i've never paid sticker it's uh you might still be screwing me but i at least want to feel like i'm getting a deal um and you know i think there's like certain laws that you can get out of tax like if you go to chicago and buy a watch and they ship it back to you then you don't have to pay the higher tax in chicago like there's little games you can play i think but then i think you're supposed supposed to play the use tax when you get back to michigan i don't know all that shit i know like you read about people doing that type of stuff but overall it's just i'm looking at you know i go into anything thinking 20 percent. it's uh if I'm ordering a new car, if I'm ordering a new boat, if I'm looking for a new watch, 20% pops in my mind as the goal. And doesn't mean you're going to get it, but that's just the way I'm thinking when I'm going into something like that. And I don't know if Rolex even bends on their stuff, but it just, the thing about Rolex is I feel like A, everyone's got one, which makes me not want one. Yeah. And then I also feel like there's so many other amazing it's kind of like going to Capitol Grill. Like, you know, you're going to get a good steak. And the service is going to be good. And the clientele is probably going to be, it's all going to be good. There's, there's going to be one in Miami and there's going to be one in Chicago. Everywhere you go, there's going to be a Capitol Grill. But yeah. is, there, is there some like higher end boutique steakhouse that's going to blow their socks off at the same price? That's how I feel about watches right now. I mean, there's a lot of, the, the whole watch game has, has come up so much that for what I would spend on a Rolex, there's a lot of other things that I want to look at personally, but that's me. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I know part of the reason why we, we even picked this article is, is because, I mean, we've had talks about watches in the past, but I, I, I like watches. I like to read about them. Um, but if I point, so two, two points here, if I point to kind of my motivation around the space, like I feel like COVID's really taken a lot of it away. Like I, I found myself not reading as much since, you know, maybe middle of last year. Um, but the, the other thing that I do do though, is, is I track, I have like a, an eBay alert for, uh, for one of my watches. I, I'll never sell it. I just like to know kind of what it's going for in the market. Uh, this is like an old Omega uh, day date that I have. And uh, co- like the, the last 18 months, the price is like shot up three X or four X. It's, it's pretty incredible. I just, what are your thoughts there? I saw, and it just pops up in my Instagram uh, search box or something like that. And it's some dude that just shows you um, like watch prices back then versus now. And then I kind of got sucked into his gram a little bit because he, he started showing these crazy prices. And I couldn't believe how much stuff has changed in like the last 18 months. So, you know, watches as a whole seem to have gone up. I'm sure, you know, everyone's a Rolex, right? So those have probably went up <laughs> significantly more, but it's crazy. He's like, this watch, you know, used to be worth 7,700 and now it's worth like not, and this one just sold for 12,000. And I was like, holy shit. So I got a, I had, I had an older tag it's like my first foray into the watch world is who knows a couple grand 15 years ago i'm like oh, how much is this thing worth now and then it was selling for like five six thousand I'm like, well, you gotta be out of here i would never <laughs> pay i'm not paying five yeah. six thousand dollars for this watch right you're out of your mind um and uh so i, I started poking around like iwc didn't go up that much you know that's obviously the the watches i like to buy the most yeah 
but the used market definitely I mean, used cars are used cars okay I got dealers calling me three or four times a week or more. I got three calls in one day trying to buy my, my used diesel pickup truck right now. <laughs> and someone offered me almost as much as I paid for it three years ago. This is my beater. I beat the shit out of this truck. Right? I, got my, I live on a dirt road in Michigan winters. There's potholes, um, trees falling. There's just shit everywhere. Like, this is the truck I beat up. And my, this truck's beat the shit. It's got 60,000 miles on it. I'm like, yeah, we'll give you like 62,000. I'm like, I, to, I almost paid that for it. I, and I drove it for three years. I, the used market, we have consumed so much shit. Everything went up in price, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's yeah. any different than with watches right now. It's uh, We had so much access to this disposable money. You know... <laughs> Granted, I think a lot of people didn't pay down bills and blow it on shit they should have. We bought Rolexes <laughs> and um, used pickup <laughs> trucks. So you can see where watches are an investment for some people probably just paid off. But I mean, there's, there's other ways to get into nice watches without spending Rolex money. And there's a brand I know, you know, that is kind of like a, it, it's made from the same company as Rolex, isn't it? But it's mm -hmm. just a it cost a little bit less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tudor, and I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of that brand in general. Uh, you know, the, the I, that's one actually that in kind of just tracking prices and things, I always feel like their brand new models MSRPs they're way underpriced to what kind of the used market. Was. I always feel like there's an arbitrage. There probably isn't, but whenever I look at them, I'm always like, oh, that's tempting because I feel like that that'll go up a lot in the next couple of years. It's kind of like, uh, I feel like every time, like Chanel raises her prices every six months, I think. Don't quote me on that, but it's it's something similar. Mm -hmm. Like Chanel bags are getting to the, like, they're getting up there towards Hermes prices. And I've heard people say, well, screw it. If I'm going to spend 7, 8K on a Chanel, then I'm just going to save a little bit more money on buying Hermes. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to see Hermes just raise their shit up more. Ch Chanel brings this market up. And it kind of forth like Hermes doesn't have to raise their prices. They were kind of the top, right? Right. But right. they're going to get pushed up by Chanel. So Hermes is going to go, well, fuck it. You know, Chanel selling stuff for, you know, seven, eight K now. So we're going to move our bags up the Kelly bag and uh, mm -hmm. Birkin. So let's move that stuff up. And then Chanel keeps moving up. And then you're going to have Gucci over here. Like, oh, shit. Chanel moved up. Now there's a gap. We could move up. And then Louis Vuitton's over there. Like, <laughs> There's a two thousand dollar price gap here. Let's fill that gap. Let's move everything up a thousand bucks, and then you got Coach yeah. down here, and it's like you know they're not moving a whole lot. So Michael Kors has kind of swooped in during the last what five seven years, and there was a, there was a gap in that lower middle part, and the Kors swoops in like oh we're going to fill that gap kind of between like Coach <laughs> and uh, Louis Vuitton, and you realize the different levels to things. Yeah. So as these market markets move up, you're probably going to watch two door. Is that even the name right? I'm probably fucking the name up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna watch no, their prices. Right. In, you're gonna watch their prices increase too because Rolex is moving up and they're basically a Rolex with a different name. It's like Toyota and Lexus, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. yeah, you there might be an arbitrage opportunity to pick those up because and then Tudor's gonna move up because someone else is coming up from the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Can, can yeah. you see people selling these like quartz watches that look nice for like two grand? Yeah. And it's like, well, shit, I, yeah. how much is like a Tudor automatic? <laughs> um, and you, you're like, after, as these top people go up and the middle moves up and the, it creates, it creates market gaps, right? So mm -hmm. you can see where those watches would appreciate. But the cool thing about Rolex, I will say this much. If I want to offload an IWC, I'm sure I'd definitely be able to find a buyer. Um, yeah. If I'm selling a Rolex, I will definitely find a buyer. And I tell mm -hmm. people this yeah. when, like, what's the liquidity of anything you buy? If you know you're going to sell it one day, what's the liquidity look like? And my thought is if I buy a couch that's got no name on it, or I buy a Pottery Barn couch, I will probably sell the Pottery Barn, barn couch three times faster than I will the couch of no name. Yeah. Because people are looking for a pottery barn. They're looking for restoration hardware, for example. So people just go don't go search on watches. They get 20 million watches. They go search on Rolex. 
Yep. So my thought is when it's time to exit an investment or anything, how fast can you sell it? And I think a lot of times people don't put a lot of thought into that. So if this is something, if this is something you do want to liquidate at some point or something you want to sell on an investment, people rarely calculate in how long it takes to sell it. You'll probably move the Rolex very fast or you'll find a dealer to just buy it off you if you wanted to, right? Yeah, right. Where the more niche you get with watches, smaller the brands, there's someone out there but it might take you six months to offload it. And someone might not be willing to pay as much as a premium for it. But yeah. I tell people, like when you buy anything, if you have intentions to list it for sale somewhere, it's always going to sell, sell faster when it's something people are searching for more often. And it's one of those things where I can buy this house. I was looking at an investment property and it's in a very nice area and the appreciation on the house will probably be excellent. But in such a specific type of buyer, when you look at how long it takes to move that house, um, the house next to it's been on the market for 1,025 days. <laughs> yeah. So quick math, we'll do some round ass shit like taxes. Let's just say three years. And I wouldn't even say that house is tremendously overpriced. It's just that the market is not that big for it. Um, I like things that move quick. If I, I want to get in and out of something fast, if, if I want to, and if you're buying a watch and thinking that I'm going to sell this down the road, or I might need the money one day, Rolex is probably the brand to do that with, or even an investment. Cause like I said, the, uh, the wealthy, I'm getting wealthy starter kit. You go, you get a Rolex and a Porsche. So, um, maybe a pair of Allen Edmonds, like these doing, we're even rocking some Ferragamos, right? It's all uh, okay. Allen Edmonds, Rolex, Porsche. You want to get that Rolex if you plan on reselling one day. Um, it's just one of those things that I think always has the liquidity there. If the price is right, someone's going to buy it because there's always someone looking for a Roly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There was a, a story that I heard a long time ago that like, if, even if you're in like a, an unknown country with no money or whatever, as long as you got a Rolex on you, you got some, you got some uh, currency. Yeah. And you, or you go buy a Folex off Canal Street. <laughs> you know, for like 45 bucks and you just go fake it. Right. And, uh, if someone looks at it, you just pull your sleeve over real quick. So no one can see that shit. Um, yeah. well, you get like the really distinctive bezels, right? The, what are you telling me about the, we were at town. Yeah. Pepsi's there, and Pepsi's. Coke, and yeah. You can get like the bezel, you know, the Rolex people are going to catch that. It's just, you know, if you got a full <laughs> X with, with, with the Pepsi bezel, you has got to make sure you, you pull your fake Merino wool sweater down over it real quick. So, yeah, you know, no one could really tell, but uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's dude. crazy though because it's like how many people every day I run into somebody that you think you know they're in sales they got a Rolex they're in real estate they got a Rolex you know everyone at the law, law firm started kit you get a Rolex and like a briefcase uh, yeah everywhere you go if, if you make like anywhere near a hundred thousand dollars it's like that Rolex thing and. Um, beautiful watches and it seems like amazingly built watches, but the fact that everyone and their mother has one, you know, I'm sure somewhere on the East coast, when you graduate high school, you get a Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> right. No doubt. You know, here's a sweater no to wrap around your neck. Here's your, here's a tennis racket and a Rolex. <laughs> I'm just like, that's not for me. I know they're yeah. great time pieces and all that. I'm just thinking, I don't really care if anyone knows what watch I have. It's uh, that thought of you know, dudes buy watches to impress other dudes. And uh, if you're buying a watch to impress a chick, then she's not going to know what it is. Hey, I don't need to buy a watch to impress anybody. I'm not buying a watch <laughs> to try to pick up a date. Like, that's just stupid. Dude, if I want a date, yeah. um, I'll buy a used Ferrari and I'll just post it on Tinder. Right? Like, there that's you it. Go. That, that dog, get it done right there. Um, <laughs> you, don't buy, you don't buy watches. And the last thing dudes do is buy watches to impress another dude. I'm sure some people buy them to display their wealth or their status, but I buy watches. I don't give a fuck if anybody knows. I, I like the <laughs> crash. I like the, how it looks. And I like the craftsmanship of it. And that's another thing. I'm not buying a Rolex. So I can be sitting in the uh, Delta Sky Lounge and someone's going to be like, oh, cool Rolex. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. But you yeah, know, that's it's true. uh it's America. Sometimes we care about those things. I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't know. I ain't got a whole lot for that. You're probably going to go shop Rolexes now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rolex.com pulled up right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'll catch you. All right, later.